buying solar panels, leasing solar panels, or getting a solar loan. What is the best investment if you're a homeowner considering a solar or battery backup system for your home? We're going to be answering that question in today's video. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 10 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean, renewable energy. Now, if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge you're going to find expert reviews on solar panels, batteries, inverters, um, basically any equipment that makes up the home renewable energy ecosystem, as well as short educational videos on different questions and topics related to home solar power systems. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about and answering the question, is it better to lease or buy or finance the purchase of my solar power system? Now, back in the day when solar was just getting started for residential systems, most of the large solar providers were offering solar leases and uh, the reason is because th there weren't really many good consumer finance options at the time. Uh, I'm talking about like between 2010 and 2016, 17 timeframe. Um, there really weren't that many great consumer loan options for doing a solar power system. And so what the large providers were doing, like SolarCity, uh, Vivint, uh, Sunrun, is, is they were offering a solar lease option. And what the solar lease option is, is it gave the homeowner an option that they could convert to using solar power for their home uh, without really having to put any money down or without having to arrange financing on their own. So it essentially was a bill swap type of situation. In other words, instead of paying the power company, say $150 a month, you can pay your solar leasing company that same $150 a month uh, and they will guarantee that the rate of electric uh, bill increase would be slower than what the utility, you know, the, the pace at which the utilities were raising rates. And so this is one of the things that helped give a boost to the residential solar market as things were just getting going, because very simply, uh, it allowed more homeowners to go solar that didn't have the cash saved up. Now, when I started installing solar back in 2012, 2013, uh, it was pretty much all cash only for the first five years. So if you wanted a solar system or if you wanted a battery backup system, you had to be willing to write us a check and pay for the entire cost of the system when the installation was completed. Just a word from our sponsor, Span.io and the Span Smart Electrical Panel. If you're considering an investment in a solar plus battery backup system for your home, then you're gonna to wanna to have maximum visibility and control of how much solar energy you're collecting, how much energy you're storing, and where that energy is being spent within your home. The SPAN Smart Electrical Panel allows you to dynamically control which circuits have access to backup power and which ones do not without the need of a separate critical loads panel and get up to 40% more running time on your battery backup. So feel free to go directly to the span.io website, or you can just visit the link on the description below. It'll take you to the page. You can get more information, or if you'd like to, get in touch with an installer right away. So the leasing companies provided another option, allowed more people to get started with solar power with no upfront or little upfront cost. Now, the downside on the, on the other hand, though, is that when you're leasing a solar power system, or when you're using what's called a power purchase agreement, you don't really own the equipment and you don't really have the same control over the equipment as you would when you own the system, either with an outright cash purchase or with a financed ownership. And so for those of you that have specific requirements for what you're looking for in your solar power system, the lease is generally not gonna be the right option. Um, if you ever met with a solar company that's offering a leasing option, generally they're just offering you a certain amount of solar electricity, a certain number of kilowatts uh, or a certain amount of kilowatt hours per year electricity production. Um, but usually they're, they're not going to really offer you the options of what specific solar panels or what specific inverters that you'd like to use. 
Um, the other thing that you're going to typically miss out on with a leased system or a PPA system is the ability to do a battery backup. Now, as many of you know, adding a battery backup to your solar system, uh, it does give you a lot of uh, protection in terms of protecting your home from a blackout, but it can increase the cost of your installation significantly. And most leases have very tight parameters as far as the financial performance of the investment. In other words, the system has to keep the cost within a certain range and it has to produce a certain amount of electricity. And, and of course, the reason for that is because the company offering you the lease, in most cases, they're not using their own cash to, to, to build the system for you. They're actually going out and getting financing on their side. Usually they're, they're doing it at much larger scale, but they're getting financing on their side using that to fund the construction of your system. And then they also actually profit a little bit off of the cash flow. Same way a real estate investor will take a mortgage from the bank to purchase a, an apartment building, let's say, and they'll rent it out to tenants and they'll profit a little bit on the cash flow spread between their cost of financing or that, their debt service cost and what the income that they generate uh, through the rental income or through the leasing income in this example. And so that's part of the appeal for the company is that they get a little bit of cash flow income from the leasing that you pay them. Uh, of course, the other advantage is they get the solar tax credit. So a big part of the solar incentive right now is that 30% uh, solar tax credit, investment tax credit. And so if you choose to lease your system rather than to own it, you're, you're basically giving that tax credit away to the leasing company or to the company that actually owns the asset even if it's physically installed on your home. And then the other reason why the leasing companies like this is because they can take advantage of depreciation. Now, I'm not a tax professional, I'm not giving any financial advice here, but, but as a commercial entity, they treat that solar system that they own, even though it's on your roof, um, they treat that as a depreciable asset, which means that usually after about five years or so, or maybe 10 years, they've taken the entire value of that system and they've used it to write off against other taxable income. So they get an extra benefit for it that way. So that's part of the reason why companies like to offer leases. Although depending on what your situation is, it may not be the best bet for you as a homeowner. So again, remember, if you're a homeowner and you're considering a solar purchase versus a solar lease, what you're potentially gaining with a lease is little or no money down and a low monthly payment. What you're giving up is control of the specific equipment because again, it's not yours, which means that if you want to upgrade or modify the system in the future, generally you're gonna be contractually excluded from doing any kind of an upgrade. For example, if you choose to add a battery backup in the future, that may not be possible with a leased system. You're also giving up the tax credit so if getting the tax credit is something important to you, if you have high taxable income and you really need that tax credit to help offset other income, then the lease is generally not going to be the right option for you. However, if your income is not taxable, uh, maybe you're a pastor or maybe, uh, maybe you're, you have a social security or disability income that's not taxable. Well, in that case, a lease might be an easier option for you to get started because you won't need to be able to collect any sort of a tax credit to get the lowest monthly payment possible. But folks, I think it really comes down to control. Um, although there are several options to get a low monthly payment for solar, even though interest rates are rising right now and monthly payments are a little bit higher on your traditional solar loan financing options, there are several ways to get a no money down option for your solar where your savings on your monthly electric bill is enough to cover your monthly cost of having the solar system. So I really think it comes down to two questions you have to ask yourself is, number one, are you eligible to receive the solar tax credit? And is receiving the solar tax credit, is that gonna be sort of a make or break for you in terms of whether the economics of this investment makes sense? And the number two is, do you want to have control over the selection of the equipment and any future modification of the equipment? if you choose to tie in a battery backup or a generator, or maybe just wanna add more solar panels to the system in the future. Now, the other thing to watch out for with a power purchase agreement is the escalator. 
And what the escalator means is that typically written into the power purchase agreement contract or the leasing contract um, is an annual rate increase in the rate per kilowatt hour that you're going to pay to the leasing company. So remember with, with a lease, you're not technically leasing the equipment. What, what you're generally doing is you're agreeing to purchase the electricity from the com a company that owns the solar equipment at a certain dollar rate per kilowatt hour. Generally that dollar rate is lower than what, what the power company was before solar, but still you're, you're typically gonna have an escalator, which means that each year the, the, the rate per kilowatt hour you pay is gonna go up you know, two to 3% per year. So be careful of the escalator. Um, the other thing to, to be mindful of is that you're not really building any equity in the system, because again, you don't own the system. You're basically just providing the platform. You're providing the property uh, on which to install the solar system, uh, but it's not yours. So it doesn't matter how many monthly payments you make on a PPA, you're not really making any progress towards owning the system. And, and similarly on that track, when it comes time to sell the house, you're not really gonna get any additional resale value uh, from the home. I mean, I mean, you might if, if you find somebody who's really enthusiastic about having a solar system on the roof, but th th there's, there's really no ownership or equity for you to transfer for the new owner. In fact, if anything, it could hold up the home sale or just be one other item that has to be cleared up. Either the new homeowner would have to take over the, the lease of the solar equipment, um, or you may have to buy out the lease upon transferring of the property. So of course, consult with your tax professional, consult with your real estate professional on the exact details of that, but these are just some things that you wanna consider before engaging in a lease or a power purchase agreement. One additional benefit of the lease or of the power purchase agreement uh, is the fact that there is no maintenance cost for the system owner. So, you know, if, if you have a leased system installed on your home, although it's physically installed on your home, the asset is not owned by you. So if there ever was any sort of an equipment malfunction, let's say one of the solar panels was damaged or maybe one of the, one of the inverters got damaged or malfunctioned, you would not be responsible as the homeowner uh, to pay for any of those repairs. Uh, and of course, the same should be true if you do a purchase system, whether you do cash purchase or if you do a, a solar loan financing. Um, however, from time to time, what will happen is solar contractors will go out of business. So if you did a financed purchase of your solar power system, uh, in the unlikely event that the original contractor that did the install is no longer in business, then you could find yourself in a position where you're gonna have to pay out of pocket for any repair course uh, that are needed if you have to have another contractor come in to make repairs for you. So folks, this has been a brief discussion on the pros and cons of buying versus leasing solar panels. Um, as always, if you are in the process of looking at numbers uh, and looking at different options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote for either of these options, or maybe if you already have a quote and you just wanna get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the best offer, uh, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below, set up a short Zoom call with one of our experts here, and we'd be happy to provide some numbers and some information for you. Uh, of course, if you're getting good value from the videos that we publish on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up, uh, and also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Um, that way, as we publish the new videos out, you can stay up to date with us. You know, right now we're trying to get at least two to three new videos out for you every week, you know, long form videos, as well as now we're starting to put some of the short form videos out for you as well. So that's a great way for you to keep up with us. Well, folks, that does it for today's video. I thank you for sharing some time with Solar Surge. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.